Hey everyone, I wanted to record a video of um, being a little more, more thorough with the approximation of the integral test that we talked about in class. So I wanted to explain the graph a little more of what I did in class earlier. So we have our function f of x equals 1 over x. And this is for, we were looking at the series n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n squared to illustrate how we can use the integral to approximate the sum. So I have my the same graph that I had in class A and B. So A is the over approximation, right, which notice it is the terms of the series. So if we plug in n equals 1, we get 1 over 1, which is 1 plus 1 fourth plus 1 ninth plus 1 sixteenth, 1 over 25, and so on, plus 1 over n squared. And this one keeps going on to infinity. And so I have A. Notice that the over approximation is actually the terms of the sums of the sum. So this rectangles, like the area here, this is one. All of this is one. So the area is the base times the height, so is really the one over x squared as x changes. Right, so from graph A, we know, and I have the partial sum here. The Sn is the sum of the first n terms. But notice that from graph A, we can see that the integral, right, is the area under the curve. So the integral from 1 to this one, this rectangle here that starts at n, it actually will end at n plus 1. So I'm, I want to look at the area up until that point. And so it's going to be the integral from 1 to m plus 1 of f of x, right, of 1 over x squared dx is less than Sn, right? Sn is from up to a n here, a1 all the way to a n. So that integral is less than or series up to n because these are an over approximation right they're above the curve so now let's look at graph b now graph b i'm using the right end point so this gives me an under approximation so notice that now right we have i have this much area that is under the curve. And so now my a sub n equals oops, 1 over n squared there. Notice that that's where I n. So that gives me the height. So this will then be that the integral from 1 to n of 1 over x squared dx, right, that gives me that area under the curve from 1, right, I'm starting here at 1, all the way to n for the area under the curve. But now these rectangles are giving me an under approximation, so the integral is greater than, greater than what is the question. So notice here my Sn, right, I have a1 plus a2 plus a3. So, but notice my under approximations here start at a2. Right, so Sn is a1 plus this, and this is the part that is under that integral from 1 to n of 1 over x squared dx. So, what does that mean then? So that means that the Sn, right, my Sn here, is less than a1 plus the integral from 1 to n of 1 over x squared dx. Because, right, this part from a2 to a n is smaller than 1 plus 1 over x squared dx from 1 to n, then sn is smaller than a1, that term over here, 
plus then that same integral. And so putting these two together, we can say, therefore, from the integral from 1 to n plus 1 of 1 over x squared dx is less than Sn, which is less than, then using the part b, a1 plus the integral from 1 to n of 1 over x squared dx. And even though this was for our particular a sub n, we can generalize it to all um, series that can be integrated. So the integral from 1 to n plus 1, or wherever your series starts, the one, the example we did in class, we started at 0, right? So we went from 0 to n plus 1 of a sub n, um, which is really, we call it f of x, is less than your sn, less than a1 plus the integral from 1 to n of your f of x dx. All right, so let's try a different example than the one we did in class. All right, so let's try this example. Estimate the sum for S20 for this series, e to the minus n, if it converges. So first, determine if the series converges. And for practice, we're going to use the integral test. I know that we can use the geometric series test, but Let's just for practice try the integral test. So we're going to say using integral test. So what are the things we have to check? Right, there are three conditions. We have to check that a sub n is of positive terms, that it is continuous, and that it is decreasing. on the given interval. So our interval is on 1 to infinity, including 1. All right, so is it positive? a sub n is e to the minus n, which is really 1 over e to the n, right? So on 1 to infinity, this is always going to be positive, right? n is positive, e to the n will be positive, 1 over e to the n is positive. So um, we can say a sub n equals 1 over n, e to the n, sorry, is greater than 0. 2 is a continuous. On our interval 1 to infinity. Um, so this is, since it's a fraction, it's possibly not continuous when the denominator is 0, but e to the n is never 0 especially not on 1 to infinity, so there's there are no points of discontinuity. Therefore, we can say 1 over e to the n is continuous on our interval. Is it decreasing? We can take the derivative here, so let f of x equals e to the minus x, and then f prime is negative e to the minus x, which is really negative 1 over e to the x. 1 over e to the x is positive. We already said um, up here in 1 that 1 over e to the n is positive, so that negative makes the entire derivative negative. So since f prime of x is negative on 1 to infinity, that means f of x is decreasing. Cool. So we have the three conditions met. It's positive terms, function is continuous, and the function is decreasing. Therefore, the integral from 1 to infinity is e to the minus x dx, and the series n equals 1 to infinity of e to the minus n behave the same. And now we can solve the integral since they behave the same. And the one we do know how to solve is the integral. Let's see what the integral does. So when I integrate this, we get negative e to the minus x from 1 to infinity. To make it mathematically correct, I'm going to say the limit of b goes to infinity of negative e to the minus x from 1 to b. And plug it in. 
minus and minus, so plus e to the minus 1. As b goes to infinity, this part is, becomes e to the negative infinity, which is really 1 over e to the infinity. So that goes to 0. So I'm left with just e to the minus 1, which is 1 over e. Therefore, the integral converges, which means the sum converges. So 1 to infinity of e to the minus x dx converges. Therefore, the series n equals 1 to infinity of e to the minus n converges also. And always tell me why by the integral test. Again, I'm doing this by the integral test just to illustrate that we can do it so that we can practice with it. But you can check as a geometric series, right? Um, n equals 1 to infinity of e to the minus n is really n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over e to the n, which is geometric. And with r equals to 1 over e, which is less than 1, so it converges. So I can do it both ways. I can do the integral test, and I can do it by geometric. But we're practicing the integral test, so that's why I wanted to do that. So now that I know it converges, we're trying to estimate the sum for n equals 20. Using the integral test. All right, so going back up to our estimation formula that we came up with up here, I know that Sn is between the integral from 1 to n plus 1 of my function and a1 plus the integral from 1 to n of my function. So let's put that in here. So our function is, right, our series is n equals 1 to, I'm going to say 20, of e to the minus n. So we're going to let f of x be e to the minus x. And so what can I say? Based on the formula above, I'm going to have the integral from 1 to n plus 1. n is 20. So I'm going to have to the 21 of e to the minus x dx is less than s20, which is less than a1 plus the integral from 1 to n, so 1 to 20, of e to the minus x dx. Now a1 is when n equals 1, so it's just e to the minus 1. All right, we already integrated this above. So I can just say minus e to the minus x from 1 to 21 is less than s20, less than e to the minus 1 plus negative e to the negative x from 1 to 20, and then evaluate it. So this becomes minus e to the minus 21 minus a minus plus e to the minus 1 is less than s20, less than e to the minus 1. And the same thing here, minus e to the minus 20 minus a minus becomes a plus e to the minus 1. And so e to the minus 1 plus e to the minus 1 is 2 e to the minus 1 minus e to the minus 20. So this tells us that the sum of the first 20 terms are between these two values. So if you put those on a calculator, now um, I did my math and hopefully I did it correctly ahead of time. So I got 0.36789 here is less than S20. And you can double check my math, please. And this will be 0.73575. So that means that the sum of the first 20 terms is between those two numbers. So this is quite a big range. Right. And so this will give us a, a range for our sum. So I know it's in between those two numbers somewhere. Now, because this is a geometric series, we can actually find what the sum is, right? Since, um, let me go back over here. So n equals 1 to infinity of e to the minus n 
is geometric is really one over e to the n. When we're looking for the sum of the first 20 terms, S20 would be the sum from n equals 1 to 20 of 1 over e to the n. Um, now the formula that is given in the book for a finite sum, again, just as I mentioned in class, it is given for when the sum starts at zero, right? So if you have, so the, the formula the book has is that Sn equals from n equals zero to infinity of a times r to the n when you have a geometric. And it says that is a times one minus r to the n over one minus the ratio, right? So just keep in mind here that when you're using this formula, you're starting at n equals zero. So when you start elsewhere, you have to adjust for that. So here we're starting at n equals one, right? So that means that when I do, if I do this one here, n equals zero to infinity of e to the, not infinity, sorry, the finite sum, 20, of e to the one over e to the n, then according to this, this is going to be equal to a, well, there's no a here, a is one, so 1 times 1 minus r, 1 over e, to the 20 over 1 minus r, 1 minus 1 over e. Right, but this starts at 0. So that means that this has an extra term. It has the 0 term. So we want to subtract that. So n equals 1 to 20 will be this guy. Um, it will be this answer minus the first term. So when, right, because we're essentially saying we're, we're ignoring the first, the zeroth term, we're starting at one. So what is it when n is zero? One over e to the zero is one, so minus one. So you're subtracting the when n is zero. So if this started at like n equals three to 20, then you would want to do minus one, minus one over e to the one minus one over e squared. So you need to subtract that many terms. So this, then I can bring it over here. So that's going to be one minus e to the minus 20. I'm going to write it back as a negative exponent just to save space and one minus e to the minus one. Right, that's from zero to 20, and I need to subtract my a to zero. And so that will be what the actual sum is. And when you put that in your calculator, we are going to get, I got 0.5819. So does that, is that consistent with our approximation from the integral test? Yes, right, the integral test told us that S20 is a number between 0.36789 and 0.73575. So it's a number between those two. And the nice thing about the series I chose is that it's a geometric, so we can actually find the finite sum using the formula given in the textbook. And I know that the finite sum is 0 0.5819. 0 0.5819 is a number between 0.367 and 0.35. Is S20 doesn't give us a very good approximation, but at least we can narrow it down. We can put a, a lower bound on the sum using the integral test, right? We can put a lower bound and an upper bound. All right, the next thing will be talking about the remainder. So I'll do an example of that in a different video.